What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panuta for tutorials.eu. In this video, you are going to learn how to install Unity and Visual Studio, the two tools that you are going to require to build video games using Unity. And you are also going to see how to connect those two in case that it doesn't work for you, which sometimes happens if you install Unity by itself, including Visual Studio while installing Unity. So that are some situations where this can cause problems and we're going to look into that and how to connect it correctly so that problem doesn't happen to you. So definitely check out this playlist up here which will make sure that you're going to become a game developer. So let's get started. So you just need to search for Unity 3D download and then go to unity3d.com. So here this is going to be the download that we're going to require. There are two options as you see here, actually there's a third one to download the beta, but we're going to use the Unity Hub, which allows us to very easily select the different Unity versions and actually even install different Unity versions at the same time on our machine, which can be useful if you are working on different projects and Maybe you're working with multiple people together and then you want to stay on the same version instead of changing the version all the time. So that's something that will be very handy when it comes to Unity. So here you can just download the Unity Hub Setup EXE. And once the EXE is downloaded, let's get started installing it. The first thing you will need to check is the license agreement. So read through it. And once you're done reading and you can agree with it, click on agree. Then you can select the destination folder, click install. And once all of that is done, you can run Unity Hub and click Finish. So as you can see, it says you have no valid license and you have multiple options here. You can either manage licenses, dismiss it, or you can select manual activation and save the license request. Then go to license.unity3d.com manual. Here you can then create your Unity account. And once you have created it, you can log in with that account once you're logged in, you will see this manual activation here where you can then browse and select the file that you just created, this Unity license ALF file. Now let's open this file, click Next, and activate the Unity Personal Edition. Then you have to select the option that suits you. In your case, you would select usually, I don't use Unity in a professional capacity unless you make a bunch of money already. In my case, I have a company that does less than 100,000 in the last fiscal year, but I'm still going to select this one for demonstration purposes. And then you can download the license file and back in Unity, you can actually select this license file. So select this new license file that was generated for you, click confirm, and you see that you have a license now. On top of that, you should log in with your Unity Hub account that you just created. And once you're done with that, you can go back from the preferences and here in projects, you can either add a new project or you can go over to installs where you can then locate your Unity versions because, well, you can't add a project without having a Unity version installed. So let's go ahead and add a Unity version. And as I said, if you have Unity installed already, you can locate it from your Unity Hub but I assume that you haven't installed Unity yet. So at this point, once we're in installs, let's go and click on add. And you see that there are recommended releases, official releases and pre-releases that we can select here. And they will be different depending on when you install this and when you use Unity Hub. In my case, the latest version that is recommended is 2020.3.4. And the one that we are going to use, however, is going to be the same one. So we are going to use the 2021 version and you can go here over to download archive because we're going to use a specific one. So what will open up is going to be this screen from where you can download and install different versions of Unity. You can see even older versions such as Unity 5 and so forth are available here. We're going to use 2021.1.0 which is going to be the one that you can find here when you scroll down and you can just press on this button and this will open up this little pop-up where you can just click on open Unity Hub and this will then open the version in Unity Hub. You can see here, add modules to Unity 2021.1.0. So if you want everything to look exactly the same in your Unity, when you go through the course and follow the instructions, 
then I would really recommend that you use the same version as we do because otherwise things might look differently and then you might get confused because the steps are not exactly the same and so forth. So if we are all working on the same version, it's going to be a lot easier for you as well as for us when it comes to support. So I highly recommend to select this version and you can see Android build support in my case is selected. In your case, it might not be selected. And that is because I had this version installed already. So just make sure that you have this checked as well as the other options checked as well. This will allow you to export your games to then also run them on an Android device. So basically this will allow us to build our games to be an APK file, which we then can use and install on Android devices. If you want to use iOS build support, then you need to make sure that you are in fact running a Mac, otherwise this won't work. Same goes for tvOS and Mac build support as well. What we're going to use as well is the Windows build support, which will then allow us to export our game so that it can run on Windows natively without using Unity. And then I recommend to have the documentation selected as well, and it will enable us to read through those descriptions and it will make it a lot easier to understand what the individual classes do. All right, and now let's click on install and this will then start the installation process, which will take quite a while. And once the download is done, it will start installing, which will then take a little while as well. And then in the process, the Video Studio installer will also be installed. The Visual Studio installer is basically the same thing for Visual Studio as the Unity Hub is for Unity. So it's basically like a hub where you can then install Visual Studio and make changes to your Visual Studio installation. So as you can see, it pops up and installs Visual Studio on the side as well, which will then of course take a little while also. And this of course highly depends on the speed that you have for your internet connection. And once Visual Studio is also installed, you should see that Unity should be ready in your case. And just in case you decide to make changes to your Unity installation, you can click on those three dots here. You can either uninstall it, show where it is in the Explorer or change the modules. So here, for example, I could deactivate Visual Studio, which is actually going to be the software that we're going to use in order to develop our games. So the code that we're going to use. And yeah, also here you can see, you can add additional build supports here, for example, and also language packages, but we're not gonna do that for now. If you also want to have multiple installs of Unity, you can manage that through your Unity Hub. So you could click on add here and then select a different Unity version. This is going to be useful if you work with different teams on different projects. And for example, one team is working on the Unity 2020, the 3.4 version, for example, and the other team is working on a 2018 version, then it would make sense for you to have the different Unity versions installed because Unity doesn't always work well with different versions of projects. So that's why you should have different Unity installs in that case. Quick pause. The video that you're currently watching is just a fraction of the entire course that I have to offer. So I built this complete Unity Masterclass course in which you are going to learn how to build real games and how to build them from scratch. So you're going to learn how to build a platformer game, how to build a Space Invaders clone, how to build a Fruit Ninjas clone and optimize it for mobile and export it for mobile as well, how to build a first person shooter game and finally how to build a tycoon game similar to Adventurist, which is an endless game. So if you want to become a real game developer, definitely check out the course. You can find the link in the description and you will get the course with a huge discount. So don't hesitate as you will not only get the course, but you will also get it in a structured manner with all of the code as well as a Q&A section with a five star support. So get the course now. I hope to see you there. But at this point, we are going to create our first project directly from the Unity Hub. Therefore, open up your Unity Hub, go over to Projects over here, and then click on New. This will then open up this window where you can select from different templates. 2D is the template that you would use for 2D games, 3D, of course, for 3D games. Then the High Definition RP is an option, whereas RP stands for render pipeline and then you have the universal render pipeline so here universal rp 
But as this course is for beginners, we are not going to dive deeper into high definition RP and universal RP. We're going to focus on 3D and 2D games. If you want to find out more about the individual templates that are made available, you can click on this I here and it will tell you what this is all about. And this is going to use the Unity's built-in renderer for 3D projects if we select it. Internally, a 2D project is also really a 3D project, but it doesn't use the Z-axis. So basically it's the same thing, but slightly differently designed or set up for you. And then you can see that these are options that are not by default downloaded, but you can download them anytime by clicking this download button and then use those templates. So you can see there's 2D mobile games as well as 3D mobile games, as well as AR and VR as options available. For now, we're just going to select the 3D option. Then you can give your project a name. I'm going to call this one my first game and click on create. Of course, you also can change the location if you feel like it. This will then take a little while because Unity needs to set up a bunch of assets for us because Unity needs to load the whole project because as we have selected the 3D template, there is a bunch of stuff included there. And once the project is loaded, you should see something like this here. There's a lot going on and we're going to go over the individual aspects of it in the next video. But first of all, I want to make sure that Visual Studio is going to work for us correctly because we have set up Visual Studio to be our editor that is going to be the one that takes care of the code. And in order to make sure that this is going to work, let's go over to preferences and here select external tools and make sure that open by file extension is not the one selected, but the Visual Studio community is the one that is selected. This is not the case by default. By default, maybe open by file extension is the one that will be selected for you. But in case Visual Studio community was selected for you automatically, you're good to go. Otherwise, please select it. Your Visual Studio version might be different to mine. And especially if you're using a Mac, it will also be called very differently. So it will be something like Visual Studio Mac, for example. Okay. And once that is set here, we can close the preferences. We can go over to our assets here and create a new C Sharp script in order to make sure that this is actually going to work because otherwise you might run into problems later on. So just create a script here by clicking right click, create C Sharp script, and then the script will be called new behavior script by default if you don't change the name for it. Now double click it and this should open up Visual Studio for you. And if you are not signed in in Visual Studio, you will need to sign in to your Visual Studio account at this point. So make sure that you create a Visual Studio account if you don't have one. In case you don't have a Visual Studio account, which basically is a Microsoft account because Visual Studio is owned and created by Microsoft, you can go over to signup.live.com and there slash sign up. This will then allow you to create a new account. You can go through these steps here to create an account and then log into Visual Studio with your account. So once you're in Visual Studio, you can go up here to the top and log in or sign in to your Visual Studio account if you are not signed in already. All right. Then once all of that is handled, let's look at what we have here. There's a lot going on and you don't need to understand anything that is written here for now. You're going to understand all of that later on, of course, because I'm going to teach you. But for now, I want you to type one thing in and this will make sure that Visual Studio is set up correctly, which just makes sure that your Visual Studio is set up correctly so that you can, well, basically build games and develop code and write code that works well with Unity. Okay, and here just enter RI and then if rigid body comes up, then you're good to go. And if it doesn't come up, then make sure that you really have this connection between Visual Studio and Unity. So then probably this setting here isn't selected properly. Okay, if that's not the case, select it. And if it still doesn't work, restart Unity, restart Visual Studio, and then check once again. So open Visual Studio through double clicking onto this asset here. 
and then Visual Studio will open up for you automatically. And then again, you can enter rigid body. So I'm showing this in so much detail because quite often this is something that doesn't work by default or some settings are not set up correctly and then suddenly my students get stuck. That's why I go over this in so much depth this time. But it's really important for you to do this correctly because otherwise you will be stuck later on and this is very frustrating. So let's try to avoid that. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now you're one step closer to becoming a Unity game developer. And if you haven't liked the video yet, please do so now as well as subscribe. And also make sure to follow along in the playlist to become a real Unity developer. And if you want to fast track the whole development process of becoming a developer, then definitely check out our Unity Masterclass in which you're going to build a bunch of games and while doing so, learn everything you need to know about game development and, well, have your first couple of projects under your belt. So check it out. The link is in the description below. You will get a huge discount and I hope to see you in the next video.